And here to talk about this big one is one Michael Robinson from NFL Network making his weekly appearance, as he does here on One Bills Live. And, Mike, I was shocked to see this was the only game of the week with two teams with winning records. I mean, it was the marquee matchup from the word go. And now with the implications involved, top seed, AFC North title for Cincinnati. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger. It doesn't get any bigger than this. I mean, this is essentially a, a playoff preview, a playoff game, a playoff atmosphere, all of that. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see how our Bills and our Bills Mafia responds in this environment. Um, Joe Burrow is a very good quarterback. Uh, Lou Anarumo, the defensive coordinator, he does a great job of changing things up between series, between plays. Um, I'm excited about this matchup, and not just from a superstar standpoint, but from an X's and O and football standpoint, this should be a good one. Yeah, this is the first time Joe Burrow and Josh Allen have met head to head, and you, you wonder, you know, how many times it might happen in the future. They're out of the division, and all of that stuff. Uh, but these two teams are they go because the guy taking snaps. I mean, I, I was telling Brownie earlier and our listeners earlier, this is a quarterback driven league. We were talking about the six names at the top of the uh, at the top of the division stand or the conference standings. And here in the AFC, you've got Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, and Lamar Jackson. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's that. I mean that's cream. That's the creme de la creme, brothers. Yeah. I mean, that's the th that's the future of quarterbacking. I mean, I, I did I interviewed Josh Allen, our quarterback, a few uh, you know a few weeks ago, and just asked him about the top of the AFC and and the quarterbacks, and it's just like. Every year, this is w the way it should look. And if specifically talking about these two quarterbacks, I just think they get it done in two very different ways, but it's very effective. Joe Burrow, sneaky athletic, but he does get it done from the pocket a little bit more than our guy Josh does. Josh is that big, strong, big arm guy. He's trying to push it downfield. Both of them have a, a tremendous amount of weapons. So, again, this should be a, this should be a barn burner. This is – all right. You know, I, I talk – hold on. I, I – about these quarterbacks, the one thing about it's frustrating about Joe Burrow when you watch him, and he's been compared to like he plays the way Brady does it, fr completely from the pocket, and he just picks the right guy. And it really is. And he's also a little, and this is what, going way back, and I'm going to date myself. He's also a little bit like Bernie Kosar okay. in that whatever happens bad to the Bengals, where he take, you know, the, the, the playoff game last year where he took nine sacks and still won the game, this guy will take a bad play. He'll throw it away. It doesn't matter. He'll come back on the next play. He's supremely confident. They got the weapons, and he just keeps putting the ball like a tennis player. And this is what they used to say about Bernie. He just puts the ball back in your court. You're like, now you got to do something to answer him. And he is really, really good at that of just making sure that his team always has the upper hand in whatever situation it is. He'll take a bad play. He's – He's the most, you know, nonchalant sack taker I have ever seen. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think sometimes, again, in, in this era of quarterbacking where we, we really see these quarterbacks not want to have a bad play. I mean, sometimes that's a knock on our guy sometimes, right? Trying too right. hard, you know, sometimes a bad play will happen. And so j just seeing a guy take a sack sometimes is the best is the best result of the play that could happen. Because if you try to do something else, you turn the football over. And at least if you get a sack, you keep possession. And I think that's one of those things that, you know, when I used to watch Peyton Manning, because I played against Peyton Manning, when you watch Tom Brady uh, sometimes, you know, they'll fight a little bit to stay in the pocket. But for the most part, when you get around them, they understand how to give up on the play and just live to fight another day. But I think Joe Burrow specifically – he always keeps that mental edge, and, 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 and I think that's very important. Again, you got to have a short memory in this league. You can't let bad plays – you can't let – you can't dwell on bad plays because if you dwell on them, it, they, they, those mistakes tend to come back. And Joe Burrow is just one of the best at it at just moving on to the next play and staying positive. So what is the calling card for Buffalo's defense here to try to at least slow down? what Burrow and that passing attack does, because much like Josh, if you blitz him, he sees it and makes adjustments accordingly more often than not. So he's good at beating the blitz. Uh, I mean, you can sit back and cover two shell all day, I guess, and force him to go 12 plays down the field. But how do you get the timing 
of their passing game a little out of whack? Well, I think um, kind of what you saw with Green Bay do with Justin Jefferson, you got to get physical with some of these guys at the line of scrimmage. I think Trey Davies, right? White has been getting his legs back up underneath him, and he's a bigger corner. He'd be a guy that I'd put on T. Higgins, you know what I mean, in man situations. And I, obviously, Jamar Chase is one of those guys you got to have two sets of two sets of eyes on in man situations and things like that. But quite frankly, up front, whether it's Ed Oliver, whether it's Gregory Rousseau, whether it's uh, Matt Milano in blitzing situations, whether it's um, Edmonds in spy situations where he's kind of dropping back but still kind of watching the quarterback. And, and trigger when he sees it when he sees an opening you gotta hit, put a hit put hits on uh joe burrow you got to get physical uh with this team i'm under the understanding that uh i'm not so sure that the cincinnati bengals will run the football with enough consistency that'll scare this defense but again when you got a guy like ed oliver and and, and settling those guys up front uh being able to just quite frankly beat somebody up up front and uh make a play that's what's gonna have to happen because i think uh, we're going to have to play with light boxes, meaning six or seven guys in the box to be able to stop the run to defend against that pass. Because, again, Joe Burrow, he has the patience to just take the check down every single time. That was one of Tom Brady's superpowers, right? W whatever you give to him, he's just going to take it, right? If he, if you put a running back all the way on the outside, usually quarterbacks don't throw the running backs. Well, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow, those guys, they'll throw it to him. And uh, offensively, uh, for, for our Buffalo Bills, I, we're going to have to have to find like a third receiver that's going to have to have a pretty good day. Yeah, I think also one of the things that works in Buffalo's favor, Cincinnati does not rush the passer well. I mean, DJ Reader yeah. uh, and those guys down inside, Trey Hendrickson, now they're good players. Reader, particularly in the run game, Hendrickson's playing with a bad, bad hook on his hand, a bad wing. He's still going. But they have not gotten very many sacks. They're 30th in the league or so against sacks. they got 26 all year. If they don't pressure Josh Allen, I think this might be one of those games where you play complementary football and Buffalo's offense helps control Cincinnati's explosiveness as well, um, well particularly given the emergence of their run game. And, and that's what I was about to say. That's why I'm so glad to see those explosive runs against Chicago last week, those double teams, those, sp those speed draws, all of those things, um, just the explosive runs. You need to put it on tape. And I'm a firm believer, especially – this week with this Lou Anarumo uh, defense with Logan Wilson in the middle of that defense, 55 with DJ Reader, those guys from a Buffalo Bills standpoint, they scare me because, again, they make the quarterback see one thing pre-snap and then post-snap he sees something totally different and it makes him kind of hitch or guess uh, uh, what he's seeing. And we've seen our quarterback, um, you know, in the red zone in, in the past kind of have those, kind of make those mistakes. And so just – that, that defense kind of scares me. And so what you want to do is be able to run the football so you can create some play action pass explosive opportunities to kind of get that underneath coverage um, mixed up. Because I do believe Gabe Davis one-on-one, -on -one, Steph Davis, I mean, uh, Steph Diggs one-on-one, -on -one, they, they won't be able to be stopped. And our guy obviously could put the ball anywhere on the football field. All right. So let's go from the X's and O's to some of the comments that were made <laughs> by one Tyler Boyd, and by Joe Mixon this week. First, Tyler Boyd said, yeah, the Bills defense, they don't do really do anything exotic. They just kind of do their thing. The secondary really isn't the best one we've played this season. So, you know, a little knock. And then Joe Mixon doubles down and says, the AFC goes through us. We're the dogs of the AFC. Now, look, I know they've won seven in a row. They are the defending AFC champs. This is a giant game. These are two veteran players. What are they doing here, Mike? Well, it, it, it seems like to me they're trying to get Bills and Bills Mafia off their game a little bit. I mean, you know, it's a little gamesmanship in there. I wouldn't have been speaking that way. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't have done it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end <laughs> of the day, at the end of the day, especially when you talk about the AFC happen to go through them, they represented the AFC last year. And until we beat them, and, and represent the AFC in the Super Bowl, I mean, where's the lie in that particular statement? But at the end of the day, I think they're trying to have a little gamesmanship and get in the heads of the Buffalo Bills players because of that respect, I believe, that they have for Bills and Bills Mafia. If neither team turns the football over tonight, who do you think wins? Bills Mafia, all day by three. Um, I, I believe that this game has a potential of not having any punts. I believe this game has a potential of being a kind of a, 
you know, explosive game with being able to slow it down at times. And, and I guarantee there's going to have to be a time where we're going to have to put together a four minute offense and run the football and get first downs with the running backs, James Cook and Devin Singletary. And I believe what we put on tape last week with this offensive line put on tape last week, I believe we can get it done. Last one for me, Mike. Um, the way that Coach Dorsey has mixed in tempo the last couple of weeks, he's kind of had them speed it up. He's had them slow it down. Uh, he's caught defenses, you know, without getting a substitution on the field for a personnel grouping change. You know, muddle huddle, sugar huddle, whatever you want to call it. Like they are jumping into some fast tempo things, which is something that Dayball used to do from time to time. Uh, maybe just explain the the biggest value in that provided you are executing and converting. Yeah, so let's just, for an example, maybe you're in a personnel with two tight ends and two wide receivers. We call that 12 personnel, right? One running back. And um, maybe you just ran the ball two times in a row, but you have an explosive play that you've been setting up all game and you, you, you usually run it out of nickel, but now you're in 12 personnel and you want to run that same play out of 12 personnel. And so you you, you go real fast to kept to catch the defense in a base in a base defense with three uh, linebackers. And so th that's that little bit of um, a, a, what an offensive coordinator can do to help your quarterback out, to help the offense out. So that playing the quarterback position, and again, it's not easy, but again, but, but you can help your quarterback have an easier job processing and playing the game. When, when you can throw a, a defense off, off like that or do what you, you guys used to see Aaron Rodgers do, you see them trying to substitute late, but because you didn't substitute, their defensive coordinator knows what you're trying to do, so he's trying to get nickel back on the game. You get too many guys on the field, you get a free play, all of those things start to start to become alive when your offensive coordinator is thinking like that. But again, that's that's football at a 400, 500 level. And again, I think this offense and obviously getting Dorsey and this quarterback is ready for that. Mike, thanks, man. Enjoy the game tonight. I can't wait. I mean, we're all sitting here just looking at our watches all afternoon, even with the Winter <laughs> Classic going on and, and the Rose Bowl going on. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> No, we, no, we, we don't, don't care. care. I'm going to watch the Rose Bowl and then watch that right on into the Monday night game. But I got to tell you guys, man, Bill's Mafia has been hitting me up. I've at least gotten at least 50 videos of different bars of people just chanting. Bill's Mafia is ready. I can't wait for this game to get started. See you guys next week. All right, Mike. Thanks as always for the time. We appreciate it. That's Michael Robinson, NFL Network Analyst.